That's been historically true. That the you know the best returns are, are if you can get an allocation. Afterwards, if you're buying in the first day, and really the opening price is almost the full first day return. If you're going to buy at that day or the day after, on average they've been IPOs have been sort of average performers over six months. And if you take like a, a multi-year view, they've tended to underperform. But it's very kind of you know differentiated. There's a number of companies that underperform, have negative returns, as you mentioned. There's also a handful that have spectacular returns. So it really comes down to being able to pick and sort of identify those companies that think are going to be winners. But there's some things that you can look at that differentiate it. But on average, they're just you know, average to under or below average performers. I wanted you to home in on that, and that is what are some of the common themes uh, about the companies that did outperform in the longer run? So generally, companies that are larger when they go public, you know, revenues over a billion dollars have outperformed. Those that have kind of advanced beyond the stage of just having venture capital to having kind of growth capital to sustain them while they're growing privately, on average, those have outperformed uh, and certainly done better relative to other IPOs, but even relative to the benchmark have done better. Uh, so when we look at some of the companies that could go public this year, they meet those criteria. So if we compare this potential IPO wave versus the late 1990s, these are not dot-com companies going public. They're, they're much more established, which all is equal, bows well for their long-term performance. You know, Jason, I hear people say that, and I think it's interesting. They go, look, these companies are more established. They're not dot-com companies. But I'd rather have an early-stage company losing money than one that's been around for five or ten years and still losing money. Well, then it then it's really becomes you know, the, the probability of success. So you can have an early stage company losing money, but it hasn't even got to sort of a late stage. So the chances of it succeeding uh, are less. Maybe you get better returns. So then it comes down to what are your kind of risk reward preferences? Maybe the upside isn't quite as great, but the probability of success in this case is going to be higher than if you go really early <laughs> stage. Does, profitabil does profitability at IPO matter for longer term performance of the stock? Historically, it's been kind of almost no clear correlation. Uh, size does matter, but earnings at the time of the IPO hasn't really been predictive of the first day. And even sort of longer term performance is not really predictive. I think what you really need to see is companies that are growing, uh, growing their revenue, growing their business, that ultimately is going to lead to profitability. And that really comes down to you know, analyzing each company on a case by case basis and seeing is this a viable business model? Are they going to translate those earnings growth into uh, or revenue growth into earnings growth at some point in time? Yeah, Facebook and Google were profitable when they went public, right? Uh, I can't speak specifically to them, but I think there's examples where uh, even with Facebook, when they did go public, there was uncertainty about their business model. Uh, it was only once they transitioned to kind of uh, demonstrating the ability to perform on mobile that they really took off. Six months after Facebook's IPO, their price was down 30 percent. So even the first six months doesn't necessarily determine how the company's going to perform long term. So really the first few days and even the first few months, it's very much a price discovery process mm -hmm. where analysts covering it, investors have to figure out what is the business model uh, and what I really want to pay for it. Right. But I mean, Jason, really the bottom, the true bottom line from all this, as you know, at least what I'm hearing from you right now, is that the best shot for longer term performance is to invest in, a, in IPOs that are like the unicorns that we are expecting to go public. If you can get a share allocation in the offering, um, that's been a pretty good predictor of, of good long-term performance. And these companies, certainly compared to past kind of hot market companies, have probably have a better chance of success.